Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at collision theory and rates of reaction. We're going to talk about what collision theory is and how changes in the temperature, concentration and pressure of reactants, as well as the use of a catalyst, can affect the rate of a reaction based on collision theory. Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves, rate equations, and more advanced areas of kinetics have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about collision theory, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. A chemical reaction describes a process where one or more substances, called reactants, come together and form different substances, called products. The rate of a reaction refers to how quickly it is occurring. This can either be considered as the speed at which products get formed in the reaction or the speed at which the reactants get used up. A faster rate of reaction means a quicker reaction. Temperature refers to the average kinetic energy of particles in a system. The higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy of the particles, and the faster they are moving. Pressure in chemistry is used to describe the force exerted by gas particles on the walls of a container. The higher the pressure, the more gas particles there are in a given volume, meaning a greater force exerted on the walls of the container. The pressure inside a container of gas can be increased by adding more particles of gas into the container, increasing the moles of gas, or by making the container smaller, decreasing the volume. Concentration refers to the amount of a substance in a given volume. Units are usually moles per decimeter cubed. For example, one mole per decimeter cubed means there is one mole's worth of the substance in one decimeter cubed of volume. In 0.5 decimeter cubed, there would be 0.5 moles. Recap done? Let's go! In a gaseous system, particles are constantly randomly moving in all directions. As a result, the particles are constantly colliding and hitting each other. Just like with any two objects hitting each other, particles exchange energy when they collide. This energy comes from the speed with which the particles are moving. The faster two particles are travelling when they collide, the more energy that there is involved in the collision between them. For certain particles, if they collide together with enough energy, a chemical reaction can occur and new products can form. The amount of energy needed for this to happen is called activation energy and is different depending on the particles colliding, meaning different particles have to collide with different amounts of energy in order to react together. As a result, different reactions have different activation energies. Activation energy can be defined as the minimum amount of energy that colliding particles must have in order to react, and is measured in kilojoules per mole. Sometimes particles also need to hit each other in a very specific way in order to react. This is described as colliding with the correct orientation. This is a slightly more advanced idea, however, and is covered in a separate video and on chemistrystudent.com. Check the links in the description below. Most of the time particles collide, nothing happens, as they simply don't collide with enough energy to reach the activation energy required. These collisions are referred to as unsuccessful or ineffective collisions. If, however, two particles do collide with the required activation energy and a reaction does occur, the collision is described as being successful or effective. For example, hydrogen and chlorine molecules, H2 and Cl2, can react together to form hydrogen chloride, HCl. In a container of hydrogen and chlorine gas, molecules of H2 and Cl2 will constantly be moving around and hitting into each other. 
If when a molecule of hydrogen and chlorine hit each other with the required activation energy, the H2 and Cl2 molecules react and HCl gets formed. A reaction has occurred and this would be described as a successful collision. If they don't collide with this amount of energy, however, the particles don't react and remain as hydrogen and chlorine, moving around again until they do collide with enough energy and become hydrogen chloride. The rate of any reaction is based on how quickly successful collisions are occurring, described as the frequency of successful collisions. In other words, how many successful collisions are happening each second. As a result, when we talk about the rate of a reaction, what we are really talking about is the frequency of successful collisions between particles. And there are four things that influence this. Temperature, pressure for gases, concentrations of reactants and the activation energy needed. As temperature is based on the average kinetic energy of the particles, if the temperature of the reaction system is increased, the particles are effectively given more kinetic energy and therefore move faster as a result. This means it is more likely that two particles will end up colliding with the required activation energy, increasing the frequency of successful collisions. For example, with our hydrogen and chlorine reaction, if we increase the temperature, the hydrogen and chlorine molecules end up moving much faster and, on average, will collide with more energy, meaning more collisions are now going to reach that activation energy barrier. Now, every second, there are more successful collisions than at a lower temperature, meaning an increase in the frequency of successful collisions. There are still plenty of collisions that aren't successful, however. It's just that a greater proportion of all the collisions each second are now successful. Another way to increase or decrease the rate of a reaction is to change the concentration of reactant molecules. If the concentration of reactants is increased, there are more particles in the same volume or space as before. This means there will be way more collisions occurring every second, as you're effectively squeezing more particles into the same area. <laughs> Think about small children running around in a room. The more children you put in the room, the more collisions there are going to be between them. Now, a really key point here is that if the temperature of the system is kept the same, then all the particles will still have the same average kinetic energy, meaning the proportion of collisions that end up being successful compared to all the collisions occurring each second will stay the same. It's just that because more collisions overall are happening every second, there will also end up being a greater frequency of successful collisions as a result. For example, if say for our hydrogen and chlorine, 5% of collisions were successful in the first second of the reaction, if we increase the concentrations of hydrogen and chlorine, there are now more particles in the same volume, meaning more collisions happening in the first second of the reaction. However, because the temperature is the same as before and the average energy of the particles remains unchanged, the percentage of collisions that happen with the required activation energy and are successful will still be 5% of the total collisions. This same outcome can be achieved by changing the pressure of a system of gas particles. By increasing the pressure, more particles end up in a smaller volume, which has the same effect as increasing concentration. Again, increasing the number of particles in a given volume increases the chances of particles bumping into each other and the total number of collisions occurring per second increases, which will mean the frequency of successful collisions also increases. One of the most effective ways of increasing a rate of a reaction is to decrease the activation energy required for a successful collision. To do this, another substance called a catalyst is needed. Catalysts have been covered in much more detail in a separate video. 
However, as a quick overview for this one, catalysts provide a different route or pathway for a reaction to occur. That means particles don't need to collide with as much energy in order to react. Catalysts don't get used up in a reaction, and as a result, they aren't considered reactants. If you imagine activation energy as being a bit of a barrier or level that has to be reached in order for a reaction to occur, if the activation energy for a reaction is lowered, this means more collisions happen in each second suddenly can become successful. This increases the frequency of successful collisions. The actual collisions themselves, or the energy of those collisions, don't change at all. It's just more of them can become successful. It's a bit like students taking an exam. If the pass mark required for the exam is 70%, then only students who obtain 70% can pass. Just like only hydrogen and chlorine molecules that collide with enough energy can react. If, however, the pass boundary is lowered to, say, 60%, then now more students will pass the exam, even though they, or their exam marks, haven't changed at all. The students themselves haven't done anything differently. If a catalyst is used in a reaction and the activation energy is lowered, it's like lowering the mark required to pass an exam. The number of total collisions each second remains the same, it's just more of them now happen with the required activation energy. This increases the frequency of successful collisions, increasing the rate of the reaction. Catalysts can have pretty amazing effects on the rate of reactions, and many reactions simply wouldn't even occur without a catalyst, as the activation energy barrier would be too high. So, to summarise. For a reaction to start, reactant particles have to collide. In a gas system, particles are constantly moving and colliding with each other, exchanging energy. Only particles that collide with enough energy can react together. This amount of energy is called the activation energy, and these collisions are called successful or effective collisions. Most collisions between particles don't involve the required activation energy and are described as unsuccessful or ineffective collisions. How quickly successful collisions occur determines the rate of reaction, and a rate can be described in terms of the frequency of successful collisions between reactant molecules. How many successful collisions there are per second. Temperature, concentration, pressure and activation energy all have an impact on the frequency of successful collisions in a gas system. Increase in temperature increases the average kinetic energy of particles, meaning a greater proportion of collisions are successful, increasing the frequency of successful collisions. Increasing concentration of reactants means there are more particles in a smaller volume, increasing the frequency of all collisions between particles meaning the frequency of successful collisions also increases. Increasing the pressure of a gas system has the same effect as increasing concentration, also increasing the frequency of all collisions between particles, meaning the frequency of successful collisions increases. Decreasing the activation energy for a reaction by using a catalyst means a greater proportion of collisions become successful. The same frequency of collisions overall, with more that are successful, means an increase in the frequency of successful collisions. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.